So I mentioned when I was testing Intel CPUs against each other, I was looking at a 10105F and 11400F, four core versus a four core eight thread versus a six core 12 thread. I had mentioned that one of the, the drawbacks or one of the things I was a little concerned about was the amount of heat that the 11400 had uh, with the Intel cooler in that crappy case. Uh, did I just say it was a crappy case? Pretty much is a crappy case. Anyway, um, so today we're going to do something about that. Okay, so if you don't remember or you didn't see that video, don't feel bad. Not a whole lot of people did, uh, but it's it's out there. It's back there. I was comparing the 10105F, which is a budget CPU, to another budget CPU, the 11400F, which is now right about in the $150 range. Uh, I, I have a tendency to try to like look for those budget deals. And uh, just in case you haven't no haven't noticed or haven't seen prices on some of the uh, AMD cool, uh, AMD CPUs are coming down as well, and so I'm going to take a look at another one of those, uh, the 5500. But we'll get to that later. Anyway, what I was noticing with the 11400F is that I could not even run, uh, say, Cinebench without it thermal throttling, and the challenge to that is okay. The Intel cooler is okay. Everybody knows it's not great, but it's okay. But it's supposed to be at least okay for that six core 12 thread. Uh, yeah. Now, now, the big challenge for that case is the way it's built, there's no front end airflow or, or com airflow coming in the front. There's no way to mount fans in there. There is a little bit of air, there's uh, a little bit of opening, but that's there's RGB there. It gets in the way when you're trying to mount fans, and there's no fan holes to mount in the front. There are places where I can mount 220 millimeter fans in the top, and I'm gonna probably do at least one of those, probably two of them, and we're gonna go ahead and do that with a couple of PC cooler fans. I got them, there's three of them in here for, I think I got them for like 13 bucks. I'll put the link on Amazon. Not an affiliate link yet, but it will be soon, or I will put one there soon because I uh, hope we're getting close enough where I can I kind of do that. A uh, set of DN120s, I'm probably gonna start with one, See what happens. Maybe I'll do a second one. There's no way I can use all three of them that are in this box. It just doesn't make any sense. And I plan on using at least one or two of these for a, a different build when I get around to it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put an Arctic Alpine 12 in there to replace the Intel CPU cooler. Now, comparing these two coolers, this one is much thicker. The the how do I explain it? Uh, the, the fins on the heatsink itself are, are bigger, they're taller, uh, the fan is a little bit better, and it's just an all-around much, much better better product. This should fit right on top of that, um, right on top of that 11400. And the older generation, say 8000 series Intel CPUs, it said it would take off about 10 degrees. I've seen some reviews and some other thoughts where it would do in between, say, 5 and 10 degrees for a little bit older C CPUs. This should be okay for that six core 12 thread, and we're gonna find out. In any case, it's a much, much bigger, it's a beefier cooler, should fit right on top of the same thing, and we should be in good shape. Now with these PC cooler fans, uh, I did get, it's a three pin with a Molex, but for $13, 12 or $13, I mean, it's pretty much dirt cheap. So you can't really complain. They they did uh, they they were they were reviewed okay and nothing special, nothing fancy. But I don't need anything special or fancy going in that case. Uh, it's got all the RGB that it's going to need. I didn't feel like wasting a whole lot of money. It is just basically going to be a test setup. I will more than likely just use the uh, the i3 in there and use that i4 on something else when I go to expand or build or you know maybe it's my my server i don't know we will figure something out we'll burn that bridge when we get to it in any case this does yeah the, the dreaded molex but it does also have a three pin regular connector on it so i'll be able to plug that in uh and uh we'll just we'll see what happens right now it can't be any worse right it's thermal throttling or it's nearly thermal throttling when it's playing games or doing benchmarks it is thermal throttling when it's trying to run cinebench so anything below that is improvement but we're going to kind of find out and see how big of an improvement we can get off of it.
Okay, so it's several hours later. Yes, I said several hours, according to the clock on the wall there. And I finally, finally, after about 10 attempts, got everything to work where the i5 does not thermal throttle when I'm running Cinebench R20 on it. And it took a little bit. Uh, it, I, now, I don't have any complaints about the PC cooler fans. I do have one small complaint. We'll talk about that in a minute. They do run fairly quiet. I didn't have any issues with them. Uh, I'm even okay with them running on the Molex, which is what I ended up having to do because that motherboard doesn't have enough fan uh, pin, uh, the fan connectors. But neither here nor there. That's fine. That works out okay for me. Um, but th what I first did, and I'll try to make this you know relatively short, I put one exhaust fan, I put the Arctic cooler on that CPU and one exhaust fan in the back to go along with the one that was facing out of the back of the case. And about two thirds of the way through the test, it throttled. I thought, okay, we made no difference at all. And so I thought, all right, let's do two fans. So I put two fans and got just a little bit further, maybe, I don't know, and it did it again. So I thought, well, maybe if I push cooler air down into it and then it goes out the back maybe that's enough to help eh, can't really tell the difference whether it's the fans are pointing up or the fans are pointing down it uh it didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference at all so i thought you know what i'm gonna do my own little case mod and i took out the plastic piece that was preventing a lot of the airflow from coming in the front of the case and um yeah so that didn't work either so here i am thinking i I don't know what is going on here. I, I know that Arctic cooler is a decent cooler. And I, I at one point even got the fan that's sitting above my shoulder over here. Um, I put that where it's blown directly into the case with the lid, the cover off, the front panel off, and still would throttle. Now, I'd get a little bit closer to the end, but it would still throttle. And uh, I just, I just wasn't, wasn't very pleased. And overall, I'm not pleased with the case. There's no airflow in this case. Uh, it is a case that I kind of reviewed. I, I took a look at a couple budget cases not too long ago. I believe this one's by EBS Games. And I uh, looked at one from Antec. I think it was the NX400. Uh, that, the NX400 is actually a decent case. If you guys get a hold of that, uh, especially if you got it for the price that I got it for, like 60 bucks, uh, that's a buy. That, that had plenty of room for routing cables. That had airflow coming in the front. Uh, the RGB worked on it first time around. Uh, that, that was a pretty decent case. This, however, has been a challenge. And it was very, very difficult to get that i5 not to thermal throttle, even after like the ninth or 10th attempt. But I finally did. So that was good. Yeah, I appreciated doing that. Uh, what? Oh, oh, you want to know what I did? What I did to keep it from thermal throttling. Funny thing that, um, you know, it has a cooler that comes in the box with it, right? That cooler is not the same as the cooler for the i3, which I originally put on there thinking they were the same. After all, they were the same height, had the same number of blades and all that stuff, right? They look very similar. Uh, they look identical until you turn them over. And when you turn them over, you realize that the fins and the way the fins are cut gives more surface area on the cooler for the i5 than it does the i3. And I thought just on a whim, let's go ahead and try that one. Got nothing left to lose, right? Topped out at 98 degrees. Technically, it did not throttle. Made it all the way through the test. Got the highest score in Sunny Bench I'd had all night long. And I thought, you know what? That, okay. Yeah, that will teach me a lesson right there. Uh, it, the cooler, I have to admit, Intel, that, that cooler for the i3 works very well for the i3. The cooler for the i5 works pretty well for the i5. I'm not going to say it works great. Uh, I still think AMD makes better coolers, but in this case, it was the solution that kept it from throttling. Now, I didn't want to try to use an AIO or anything like that. I'm sure I could have done all right with that, but then I just would have been fighting with that case again to get everything to fit, which we already know I'm already not a fan of. So my next move for that is just take all that stuff out of the case and do something else with that i5 setup, because I think I like that setup. Well, it's got the i5 11400. And it's got the, uh, was it the RX, 60, uh, RX 6600 XT? That's a mouthful. Uh, that combination works out pretty well. And it did okay in benchmarks and all that stuff. So I think I will move that into a different environment to, to at least 
give it a fighting chance. So I can review it against the Ryzen 5 5600 that should, well, the, the processor's already here. The motherboard will be here tomorrow, and so I will be able to, uh, to start testing that. Uh, in any case, um, this, this 11400 ended up being, I mean, it's pretty decent. And I finally got it where it's cool enough where I can actually go back and, and check a couple of these benchmarks again, but it gives that a fighting chance. Of course, I am going to move it out of that case. We've already established that that case is not uh, where I want to be. But uh, as far as the actual cooling, uh, that even though the Intel cooler is good, I still think I'm going to go with a different solution. So I think I'm probably going to end up with a, a tower cooler. I'd probably go with the old standby. I think you can get the Hyper 212 for, I don't know, like 40 bucks or something. Unless I see something else I might want to try, that's probably going to be the solution. But... Um, in any, in any case, I did what I set out to do, even though it was pretty difficult and pretty frustrating and uh, taught me a lesson about OEM parts. Uh, if something comes in the box, it's probably meant to go with that part. So, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't you have to learn the lesson that I did the same way that I did. And maybe that's the whole reason why I make videos. So, anyway, uh, that is all I have for this time i will do some more experimenting with that do some more experimenting with the other uh, six core 12 threads from amd uh got other like i said got other stuff going on also going to be setting up i'm not sure which cpu is going to go in my gaming rig that i'll put in the living room but i got a sound bar a sony soundbar set up that i'm going to set up in the living room and uh see if i can't get that to be turn it into a pretty good gaming setup for the television i've got in the living room that way i can keep it a dedicated gaming area keep this an editing type streaming area and the stuff over there test a uh, test bench of some type so who knows uh, that's coming up that is not right now so right now i don't have anything left so i'm just going to remind you to do one thing folks and and well let me remind you to do two things. I'm really, really close to 500 subs. I would love to be able to get there. I would love to be able to have your help. You can like and subscribe and hit me up on all the socials and all that stuff. Uh, I would really, really appreciate it. It would allow me to get on the affiliate programs and all. But the most important thing, if you don't feel like doing that, if you don't feel like hitting the like button, you don't feel like subscribing, please do me at least one favor. And that's be nice to somebody. Friend, neighbor, perfect stranger, family member, doesn't matter. Just be nice to somebody. You might find that they're nice to you too. That is, like I said, all I got. So until next time, I'll see you later.